Uh, Brent, thank you for the introduction. Uh, one thing to notice is he actually did try uh, pronouncing, pronouncing my name like 10 times backstage. <laughs> I'm sorry for the trouble. Uh, you guys can call me Ram. No, that's simpler, right? <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm, I'm here to do this session, but one thing you might notice is uh, if you pick up the uh, schedule, uh, the name there would be Jonathan Carter. Unfortunately, Carter is, Jonathan is sick, so he couldn't make it down. Uh, this presentation was made in React, so all we had to do was set state speaker named Parshuram. <laughs> None of the other has, there's no other re-rendering. This presentation is exactly the same. So uh, my name is Parshuram. I'm a senior program manager at Microsoft. Microsoft. And uh, I work on a whole bunch of open source projects. Uh, here's one that I worked on. Uh, this is an implementation of uh, React using a web worker. And I, using this React web worker implementation, I was able to speed up React by almost 30%. Here's another, another uh, interesting thing that I've been working on. Uh, this is basically the ability to pick up any of the plugins in the Cordova ecosystem and use them for React Native. You can use anything like Bluetooth, uh, uh, barcode scanner, anything, all of the million or all of the 100 Cordova plugins and use them for React Native. So these are some of the things that I've been working on. So that's the open source part of it. And Microsoft does like open source. And uh, that's not what we are here to talk about today. We are going to be talking about web-like release agility. And most of us here started being a web developer and eventually start, moved into the world of developing mobile apps. What we like about web, de web kind of development is the fact that we are able to push in updates without having to wait for the great approval process where a big company looks at our app meticulously in every single detail and says that our app is OK to be on the store. Nothing of that sort. Uh, we have the ability on the web to monitor the health of our application and push it out there. We also have the whole idea of, hey, you just do a Git check-in, and at the end of the day, your website is up and running. So these are all the great things we love about the web. The question is, how can we get this over to the, na uh, to the React Native world or to, to the native mobile application development world? And that's what this presentation is about. Uh, there are two big problems when writing mobile applications. First, they are offline, which basically means all of your assets, all of your code, all of them pretty much live on the mobile phone itself. So there is no server, nothing that you can grind that quickly update and get your application out there. And of course, app stores, the, the amount of time you have to wait to get that single spelling mistake fixed, that's actually painful. What can be done? Well, one thing that you can do is sideload remote app updates. Basically, don't go through the app store, but that's not really an option for most of us because our, our uh, developers are usually people who just pick up stuff from the app store. The other option, which is what React Native pretty much excels at, is this whole idea about enabling code push or enabling a scenario where you just push your JavaScript assets. A lot of people who have looked at code push and similar technologies, they ask, is this even legal? Is this even allowed? Uh, what you see on the screen here is a snippet from the uh, App Store terms and conditions. It actually says that if you are picking up, if you are updating code that's picked up by either, either the JavaScript core, which is what React Native uses, or it's picked up by any built-in web kit, it's perfectly fine. So what that basically means is using services like CodePush, AppHub, Exponent, or any of the other services out there, it's actually pretty good, and you should be able to use it without having to go through React Native. Uh, the interesting thing is, given that this is such a compelling scenario, there are many, many uh, players in this space, and one of them is CodePush by Microsoft. This is something that my team has been working on, and CodePush at the end of the day is just a very simple cloud-hosted mobile application service. Uh, it has an SDK that you download and install on your local machine. And then once you do that, there are just six steps to automatically update your app without having to go through the App Store. Uh, you don't have to learn all of these steps right here, because they're also on the website. And they're actually super simple. All they say is, step one, install the CLI. Step two, build your React Native project. Step three, push it up on the cloud. That's pretty much what happens. So uh, let me actually show you guys a, uh, a demo. So what I have here is a, a very, very simple application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say a component did mount. I'm going to say function. I don't think it takes any parameters. And then I can say code push dot sync. Uh, I don't remember the syntax. It's options. OK. Uh, what's the option? Update dialog. That makes sense. I mean, live coding on the stage, I don't even remember the syntax, so. <laughs> Install mode dot immediate, OK, that makes sense. 
And uh, the second parameter is function. Let me just say console.log. Uh, log is what, so let's say, update successful, comma, status. Oh, wait, this, thing, this guy takes a status, right? OK, this is good. So this is a very simple, this is, this is pretty much all you have to do for uh, enabling code push. And let me run this React application. So all I have to do is start it up. It's going to build. It's going to build the packager and stuff. And while it's building, let me quickly sneak in an announcement here. What you saw here was Visual Studio Code. And this is something that we'll be releasing today. It's actually on the marketplace. You guys can go download the Visual Studio Code extension for React Native. It gives you things like IntelliSense, all of that. I didn't know the syntax part of the world. It actually lets you autocomplete it. it it's not just that. It actually even gives you autocomplete for JSX. So you have autocomplete for JSX. You have autocomplete for uh, uh, JavaScript. You can run React from right within your uh, editor. And you can set breakpoints. So let me do that. And OK, so this app was updated. Let me actually go use code push and change something. Let me say go to the home screen and change this hello to hi, save it, restart the app. The app, again, go, uh, goes, actually, I shouldn't restart it. I need to do the code push, which is go back to my terminal and just say code push release. This basically builds the whole thing, packages up, pushes my uh, JavaScript bundle onto the cloud. And then once the app is reloaded again, this code that I wrote in component did mount, this code uh, gets picked up. And while it's doing that, check this out. You have all of uh, React React Native methods. So while it's, it's actually done pretty fast, nice. Let me run this again. I hit run. And while it's running, here's the, so here's the uh, uh, React Native Tools preview. This is super early. Uh, the kind of things that you get is deb uh, debugging, auto IntelliSense, and uh, some kind of command palette, command palette integration. You should be able to pick this up out of the uh, Visual Studio VS Code uh, marketplace, install it, and you should be able to get all of the features that you just saw. Uh, I think we just put it out today morning, and this is exclusively for ReactConf. Uh, while it's also deploying, how many of you here use VS Code? Not a lot. It's, it's like Sublime, if that helps. <laughs> Uh, so my application did start. And by the way, if you notice, I did hit this breakpoint here. So I can move my mouse over this. I can look at typically what you would expect from any kind of good editor. You can see things like, what is my call stack? I can add watches. I can look at what are my variables, pretty much everything. I can step through. So I'm going to just run this and hit the breakpoint here. What's the status? Status is 0. OK, run it again. Now the code, che code push check happens. Because the mode was immediate, it tries to refresh the app again. I hit the breakpoint again, and in this case, the status is 1, which means we are good. It says, uh, an update is available. Do you want to install it? So this is pretty much the same experience that your user will get. Every time you use code push, you push it up to the cloud. They, whenever the user opens up the app, they get something like this that says, there's an update available for it. I can just install, and the app reloads, if you notice. And the good thing is, you get all of your logs right here. So if you add a console.log statement, they all should be right, right here. You don't even have to switch between three or four windows. Let me run this guy. Actually, let me get rid of the breakpoints first. And here's my app running. And uh, if you see the, the text that I changed, without an app update, without changing anything on the store, I was able to get it right on my app. So I showed you guys two things. Code push, something that a lot of React Native developers have been using. How many of you here have used code push before? That's a much bigger number. OK. So, <laughs> so th there, there was code push for you. And then you also saw the whole VS Code React Native extension that we, uh, that we published today. Uh, going back to the slides. So here's the, uh, uh, the, the GitHub URL. So you can either pick it up from GitHub or pick it up from uh, a marketplace, if you're, if you're picking it up from GitHub, you'll probably have to build it yourself. Uh, the other thing to notice is, as I said, this is super alpha. 
Uh, the reason this is super alpha is because we actually have a pending pull request on the Facebook React Native uh, repository, which has not been accepted. So today what happens is when you, when you try debugging, <laughs> story of our lives, right? So, <laughs> uh, so here, today what happens basically is Chrome, it launches Chrome, Chrome, and that's how your debugging starts. In this case, if you notice, Chrome doesn't really launch, and that's what is the pull request about. The pull request was not accepted, and hence what we had to do was we had to go into the node modules, tinker around with a couple of modules so that you don't launch Chrome automatically. So I'm hoping that all of these uh, uh, kind of get fixed e eventually, and we will be able to have like full fidelity debugging, not just debugging, but also things like profiling, profiling all of your JavaScript code, getting memory heaps, memory dumps, et cetera. And uh, what does the future hold for uh, code push? Code push itself, we are looking at things like targeted releases, we are looking at a lot of uh, SDK changes. We are looking at changing the native SDKs. We are looking at things like A-B testing. Uh, we are also looking at other stories like uh, hockey app integration. How many of you here have heard of hockey app? It's, the numbers are starting to grow. Is it the numbers or is it just that people are waking up? <laughs> so um, we also have hockey app integration. In case you guys didn't know, uh, hockey app used to be an independent company that Microsoft acquired a couple of uh, years ago. And by acquiring, we don't kill products. We actually let them work even better. So, <laughs> so uh, there is a React Native Hockey App plugin, which lets you do things like, uh, so Hockey App basically is a way to distribute your applications in beta to your customers. It works for both Android and iOS. Uh, you can also start doing things like collecting your crash logs and stuff. So here's a, here's a typical Hockey App that, uh, that you can use. And this is the second part of the whole uh, web-like release process, where what you do is don't worry about the app store, use something like Hockey App and Code Push, and start pushing early beta to your uh, users, and then eventually use Code Push to push final products to your end users. Uh, the final thing that I also wanted to show you was uh, something that we, re we are releasing today, which is the React Native uh, extension for uh, a continuous integration system. Uh, how many of you here do continuous integration for your React Native applications? One, two, three, okay. <laughs> eh, okay. I, it, it, mo so most of us, I'm sure, do it for websites, right? All we have to do is do a git push. Uh, Heroku does all the magic, and then you have a new, new, a new version of your application ra running out there. Wouldn't it be neat if we can do something like that for uh, uh, React Native applications also? Uh, here's one more effort uh, towards that. Uh, Microsoft has this system called Visual Studio Team Services, VSTS. In case you have ever, ever used Microsoft technology, you might, have, you might remember this thing called Team Foundation Services. This is the Team Foundation Services? Okay. It's going down again, but. <laughs> enterprise stuff, right? I mean, who writes for enterprise? Though that's where all the money is, but anyway. So, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, we, hey, we work for cool stuff. I mean, sure. M money is just secondary. So anyway. <laughs> Getting back to the subject, uh, Team Foundation Services. Uh, team Foundation Services is basically a bunch of things like issue tracking, uh, continuous integration, continuous builds, pull requests, and things like that. So the, the Visual Studio's cloud-hosted version is called VSTS, Visual Studio Team Services. You do have things like GitHub, uh, Git, uh, Git support. You have issues, all of those things. The new thing that we now have is a way for you to automatically build your React Native projects. All you have to do is point to a Git-based React Native repository. It doesn't really have to be a Git-based, but most of us use Git anyway. So it's a Git-based uh, repository. All I have to do is point to that. And once I add that step, a step I, have Re I have automatically React Native building my stuff. The other thing is, what I've done here in this example, if you notice, is not only have I built the React Native project, I also push it using code push. What this typically means is all I have to do is git commit, git push. As soon as git push happens, hopefully from master, don't, do not enable this for like an experimental branch. But on master, when things are supposedly stable, the whole continuous integration system kicks in. It builds my React Native project on the cloud, React Native for, for iOS and for Android. And once it, once it is complete, it uh, starts bundling this whole thing both for iOS and Android and, no, iOS and Android. And uh, it does the code push release. I did not say React Native for Windows. And it does code push release. Uh, once all of this is done, it finally uh, gets on the user's phone, and you don't really have to do anything to automate all, uh, to manually do all these steps. All of these are completely automated. 
So uh, that's pretty much all the four things that we had. Uh, here's my, uh, he here's the contact details of Jonathan and myself. Uh, we usually hang out in the Discord channel on the Code Push channel. You should be able to ping us there. This is my Twitter. And uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to be hanging around here. Uh, please do let me know. And please do try out uh, VS Code and Code Push and let us, let us know how you guys uh, like it. Thank you. <laughs>